Hey everyone, so I'm recording this on June 2nd. Uh, this is just in the wake of the George Floyd homicide protests and riots that we're seeing all over. Of course, it's not just about George Floyd's death, it's about so many more things, you know, including institutionalized racism and general objections to what the current administration is doing. Uh, in addition to all that, there's a bunch of construction going on just around my house right now. So, it, like, if I apologize for any extra noise, but I think everything just feels a little crazy. So that's that's the spirit of this video that I'm in right now. Uh, the last two days, I have actually played a lot of Go. Uh, just, you know, a lot of these, like, late night, you know, throw down the stones kind of games. This game is no exception. This game, uh, I'll, here, here, I'll cut to the chase, has... 13 lead changes, at least when I put it into the robot, robot's cursory analysis yesterday. Uh, and a 6-ton game, and I know it's 6-ton Taijim, so that's a special category of 6-ton, but six, a 6-ton six game that has 13 lead changes is, is pretty epic. Um, so I thought I'd share it with you and, and take it through. Again, not the highest quality Go game, right? You only get 13 lead changes when there's a lot of slop. So this is some sloppy 6-ton play. But, you know... That means maybe maybe you guys will look at some of these moves and go, oh my god, that was terrible, and boost your own self confidence. Even as a Q player, you'd be like, I could be I could be six dot on Taijim, yeah. So maybe it'll be inspiring in that way. All right, so let's get the robot on. There we go. I am black. Let's get into this game and play pretty normal opening. The robot, of course, wants me to just go take the uh, a three three point. I should, maybe I should start doing that. Robot's like, nah, nah don't like you. It's totally fine. My opponent pincers me, and I play a large shimari down here. Oh, let me turn off vari variations. Uh, which I like. And the opponent continues top right. So far, so far, like, the, ro like, the robot doesn't really like any of our moves. It just wants everything to invade the 3-3. Three, three. But these aren't terrible <coughs> mistakes. And so... Uh, I invade the corner, which is on the robot's radar, not its preferred idea, um, but seems right. And for me, playing the Straseki is a little bit of a test for my opponent, because how they answer here is going to determine how much robot AI they've studied, basically, right? Because the robot AI is play here, and but the old human Straseki is here. And so what's interesting is I can, it's like I can almost tell the age of my opponent with this one move, and I can, I can tell right here, ah, I'm playing someone who's probably over the age of 35 or 40 right because they don't play this move sorry they play this one so that's kind of neat uh this one also leaves a little bit of aji here later which you're going to see the robot just flip out of me for not using <sighs> silly robots but i mean the humans know there's aji there too it's just the robot thinks that the aji there is so much more severe than the humans all right so we play a pretty standard joseki uh, according to the robot the robot's like there's only one move just got a double approach um, basically, white gained an advantage in the bottom by taking this corner and extending into white's influence. So now white has to get an advantage somewhere else, so it has to be this corner. What's interesting is that it has its favorite move is minus 1%. That's an interesting... So what's better than one? But how do you play 0% move? <laughs> Doesn't, don't know. Uh, this is the Katago engine, which means it will give us a relative... Uh, score estimate of what it thinks the score is of the game all throughout. That's the purple line. Um, this is a very human move. Um, this is this is the normal way to follow up and enclose this bottom corner. Um, the the normal human response is what I actually give. This is the traditional human response um, is to play here in Tanuki. And the robot actually doesn't like that. Let's see what the robot wants. Because the robot says play here, and Hane, and then Hane, and then 3-3. <laughs> <and three, three. laughs> Uh, the problem, the problem with this variation, right? And this is a very inhuman thing to leave it like this, right? Whoops, uh, is this cut? <laughs> right, this black stone just gets cut off. So, <clears throat> but you know, robot says good Aji. It's good Aji. Uh, but as a human, right? We, I don't, I don't want to just push through and not get a stone cut off. So. I just play here and take Sente. Um, and there's still a cut. I still have the option to cut here or here later. Um, yeah, and there, even even right now, the robot is saying, use this Aji, right? Your opponent didn't defend this Joseki and according to the robot way. It defended the human way. Our robot way is superior. You must take advantage. 
Uh, and let's see what how this plays out. And then it says Tanuki. Great. You're a lot of help, robot. Hmm. If we continue best local move sequences here. And then <laughs> underneath. Oh, man. What are we doing? This is not human moves. Okay, robot says give opponent everything on the left and, t and make a group here and attack the bottom. But can you attack the bottom? Like, like what is play here? This is this is such down the rabbit hole. Oops, I'll play the best robot move. Robot says there. Um. All right. Well, it, it says Black's winning. I guess. I guess we like Black. White only has a tiny group here, and we have a pretty safe command of the center. And all we had to give up for it was the left. I don't know. Don't know. It's interesting. I guess. I guess the thing to learn is just, um, you know, maybe maybe humans just think this exchange is better than it is. But even so, oh, it still wants me to do that. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, minor difference, but one plays here comes up, and then I respond up here, which the robot's okay with. It's not not panicking. Again, uh, the robot wanted to move the sphere of fighting to the top right for white. So, you know, by getting to play there first, it feels like a success. And uh, my opponent played this large extension, which the robots just hate, right? You'll, you'll almost never see any of the robots play these. They always want to do these sorts of enclosures that are extending towards something, uh, but actually taking something while you're doing it. And so playing these where you're actually taking nothing, you're just potentially expanding, uh, the robots really don't like. But it's such a human move, right? So between this move and this move, you know, we're, we're fairly certain that, that our opponent has either had their heads in the sand and not watched any robot games in the past five years, or they're just old <laughs> and just have, just, just are tried and true in their ways, and that's how they're going to play Go. And, you know, given the fact this is on an Asian server and it's a six down account, it's, that's fair. It probably very well could be. All right. Um, so actually, I play a robot move. I invade 3-3. Three, three. And robot likes. Robot likes a lot. Uh, so technically, oh, we did we did actually have a lead change down here. Uh, briefly. What was this one about? This one was the one where I, where I played... Oh, actually, it likes white here, which is interesting. Why does it like white here? Oh, it thinks I should not... I should keep that stone. Okay. Interesting. So the robot doesn't even want to play Joseki. It's like, no, no, that's too good for white. <laughs> But White doesn't take advantage of it. So, all right. So we've already had the lead change there and there. All right, going back up top to the top right. Uh, takes that. Robot does not approve. I take 3-3. Three, three. Robot gives me thumbs up. And block in the wrong direction. Eh, it's hard to know. Like, this is, like, the reason why you play 3-3 three, three is your opponent doesn't know what to do. Right? Like, which direction do you block as White? Robot says this way. But that makes this stone look dumb, right? Maybe not dumb. Actually, it's still working with everything. So it's not dumb. It just... Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just hard to know because this this extension is about the same as this ex extension. Um, yeah. It, uh, like, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Robot says this way. but um, And then we pl and my opponent plays another, a third old move because um, my opponent extends here. And the robot really doesn't like this Joseki because of this crack it leaves in this wall. Uh, I extend one more time, push out, and the robot's like, yes, black. You're almost two to one lead. And now here, it's going back and saying, okay, you've produced the top left. White's, white has a, all the central influence, but it's thin. Let's just keep the pressure on. I do not play here. <laughs> <laughs> And here, it's, it's like, make one exchange and then Tanuki. Or maybe not Tanuki, but, you know, uh, do something else. Or, 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 you know, make use of it only indirectly. Like, don't directly follow up here. Okay. So the robot still says this, this is a thing. 
down here, right? Got to annoy this. This is the, the place to attack. This Aji is too much. I don't do that. Instead, I invade here. And the robot's like, you know, we were once lover lovers, but now we are only friends. It's on the radar. It gets a couple of variations. Um, this, is, this is very human, though, right? Your opponent has a big giant potential, and you invade here, um, uh, where you have the support to fight. Very human move. Robot's not in love, but that's okay. All right, here, uh, we actually <laughs> start to play this Joseki, but I don't. I play here instead of here, and it, and it kind of actually transposes to almost the same thing, um, except the robot would say White should take the corner, make all these moves, and then uh, Black comes out over here now. So basically, Black is the outside, gives up the corner. And that would be what the robot expects. I get a better result than that when I play here. Um, although the robot says no, this this is this is like dangerously close to you losing uh, all the advantage you have because White should play this co. And if White plays this co, the game is in chaos. We don't know what's going to happen. Throw your hands up in the air. <laughs> but it's like 50-50 game. My opponent doesn't play Ko, though. Like, and everyone, everyone knows this Ko. Like, like, Go players know this shape, especially at, at Dawn level players, uh, to make a Ko. But it's seen as being a Sabaki move. It's not, it's not really seen as being a legitimate, mm, like, Joseki. Sabaki meaning it's what you do when you're um, behind enemy lines, right? Like, like when you just need to make shape fast and are willing to accept any compromise because you had nothing to lose to begin with. Um, getting a huge co deep inside your opponent's territory is like major win. Like if this, if this was all black around here, like white would be thrilled. And so there's situations where you'd invite this co, but under normal circumstances, usually white will play here. This is the quote unquote proper move. But this isn't normal because we, we've already exchanged these two stones. So in this case, this is actually very passive. Uh, so, but you know, I guess it's, it's a human fallacy, right? Like, like we learn these heuristics. Like, oh, this is a normal quote-unquote case. So I should just. Not sure what sound is going on there. I don't know if that's thunder or more construction. I apologize if the sound is bad. I can't really tell um, how much is getting in the mic right now. Yes. Oh, that was a big boom. All right. I think we're okay. The levels look like they're doing fine. Uh, so anyway, my opponent plays this very passive move, and once the the, uh, the robot looks at that, the robot is going, yes. <laughs> very good, and I take the key point here. This is the key point for this whole shape. Um, it also makes my side stronger. It might, it might look like it's not doing anything, but again, it's allowing this Atari and this peep to happen and threatening to restrict white. Um, Meanwhile, right, if I did, I don't know, play move here, this move gives white just total life and actually threatens the base, of the uh, the ice base of my right. So, really big move. Um, and here, my opponent crawls out. This is very natural. And this is where I, I embark on a journey that, that actually kind of transposes back to the original Joseki, and I can show you that. But here, uh, the robot says, special case, get out first. And so that's interesting. Robot wants to make this exchange, and then come here. And that's interesting. We make this shape. Ooh, you, I think that's not right. Huh. I think most humans would play here. Robot says play here. Hmm. Does it think the liberties in this are need shorting? Like, I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to the logic, but... Oh, man, it's just a dump truck. All right. So, play here, and then come out, and then just back off. Peep, cut, oh, and we're, we're off into robot exchange madness. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, it just evolves. All right, so anyway, I, the robot says actually handling this is more important than doing any sort of covering. Um, but I peep, and again here, because this this is bad timing, and I felt like this during the game, I was like, oh, my opponent should just ignore. Right, and now, even though I have the quarterback, 
it's really not worth losing the top because this, this is a lot of points, but it's also influence to the center that white is continuing to build. So it's just really bad direction. So locally, like taking the stone's big, but it's not big enough. Um, either way, I'm fortunate. My opponent decides to protect the stone, which means I get a peep here and connect. And I jump out. The robot says diagonal is actually better. And that's, that's this is a move I need to add to my vocabulary because this seems really natural. Right? Um, such a natural looking sequence. But this one, yeah, it's pretty nice because I can actually get out a little bit faster. Yep. And if he jumps out, then I turn. I get this nice turn. Mm. So in, in this case, right, this, this ends up pretty similar to game. Um, but let's compare it because. In the game, my shape isn't quite as nice. Um, now, this peep here... Can I just play it? No. Okay. <laughs> this peep here, I don't know what to do. Like, in the game, I'm like, I don't want to connect. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure this crosscut was good for me yet. <laughs> it looked like a way for white to get a compromise while I was still sort of attacking white. And so in the end, I played this cap. And it was like, well, we're going to help my weak group and then really put the pressure on my opponents. And it, does, it still doesn't feel wrong, um, but I'm really interested in seeing what the robot says. The robot says, <laughs> just defend this way. I, I fully anticipate, oh, wow, okay, we're back into robot land. But this is an interesting exchange. So the reason why you make this exchange is to prevent this white connection. So there, so this this little foot sweep, right, can connect with this move. So if white plays here, we make this exchange before coming back and connecting. Um, oh, it still connects, though. Oh, so this is to give us another Atari, I guess? Yeah, it, does, it doesn't even, actually doesn't even protect, I thought it protected this link. Or prevented, not protected. The <laughs> robot says, ignore all that, come back down here. All right, robot, I don't know what you've been smoking. Like, this is a good move. I need to find this move in a game because it does set up things. But I don't need to do things yet. So in the game, I come up with this cap, but I still think it's actually pretty reasonable. And my opponent plays real slack move, right? This is, this is where, after this move, I felt so much more comfortable... Um, because now I get to go play this point. Uh, before this move, you know, let's play this point. And then uh, my opponent cuts here, which is also kind of a nothing move. But um, it feels like all of my weak stones are vaguely linked. My opponent's group in the corner is alive right now because it can either live or connect out. But it's not its not a lot of points. It's, it's very tenuous. It feels like I have a big prospect in the lower right. I have the lower left and upper left territory, corner territory. And uh, my opponent's only real prospect is from the left, which I do already have kind of pushed in on a little bit, right? Between this stone and this stone. It's hard for white to take this on a really large scale. So this is feeling real good. Uh, and then again, this white cut doesn't actually do anything. This is a normal probe cut, but before all this plays out um, is usually the, t the timing you want for it. Uh, my opponent does... Oh says I should do this one first. Okay. Yeah, this, so that, oh, you're right, that, yeah, that was better for black. I just take this in the game. Um, but, but, uh, here, so here, here's, here's big kick pants balls mistake. Uh, this, I just connect here, right? I'm still thinking, oh, I can, I can harass this group. And I knew it as soon as I played it. Is this one of those moves that was this dumb? But yes, this is a great time to Tanuki. Everything is safe. I don't really have a reason to protect these three stones. My opponent played a slack move here, which brought, which brought which led me to the sequence that brought me up to an 84% win. And I play it, and yep, robot says, no, you've been punished. 15% loss here. So again, sloppy game, as I promised. Uh, white plays here, and here's a move. I didn't even think about this in the game. But it's one of those mistakes where I wish I did. 
uh, using this as a peep. And I know you're all looking at it going, that doesn't prevent this cut. Right. But here's the thing. White already has this move whenever white wants. Right? So, so there's already a connection here. It's just whether or not I care about these six, seven points. And in this case, I don't. <laughs> Right when I can when I can respond in sente, and for that matter have the follow up, be sente. Um, like and I'm not even going to play this right now, right? Necessarily, probably not actually. Um, but now this is sente against this corner group, so I can connect really strongly, or even stronger with a bamboo joint here, uh, in sente, just by allowing my opponent opponent to have the option to cut. Right, I'm, I'm I'm giving up the option to cut. Um, he doesn't have to, right? He could he could just take that option and say, "I want those," and I'll take these. Like if I give him that option, we're fine. Um, and if I give him the option, and he doesn't take it, then we're better than what I get in the game. And that's the distinction. So a very subtle move, but it it's a, it's this it's like it's like this advantage that it's really hard for it to be tangible to your eyes. <laughs> Right, but playing this move, um, just offering this exchange makes my connection stronger if my opponent backs off, right? If I do come back and fix this, right? Because I could either have this, or I could have a stick, uh, which is fine. It's not, there's nothing wrong with it. But as part of the stick, notice this white still has a connection here on the bottom. Or I can have a bamboo joint where white has no connection. And I have a little bit stronger of a, of a connection out. Right, because I have a stone here instead of here. And that would be in Sente as well, in theory, although the robot says, nope, don't worry about Sente. The so, uh, robot says it's a fight out. I'm not so sure. What if we play here? Oh. What? What? It says white is winning, even though, oh, because of this, white can actually get out, huh? Oh, white can make two eyes that way. Oh... Uh, yeah, look at that. That'd, that'd be a pretty big, um, be a pretty big loss. Oh, okay. So, so I'm actually not strong enough to kill without one more. Mo I need one more move. But the good news is there's a lot of moves over here that threaten to kill. Which is why when black plays here, white plays here. Yep, and just keeps this pressure on. And so I can just keep taking sente. Right, and just and just you know play a harassing move later whenever I need it. Okay. All right, back to the actual game. So white plays this weird cut, takes this, I connect real poorly, white peeps, I connect terribly, and the robot's again disappointed in me, like, dude, you had this game one, you're just not squeezing every drop of juice from the lemon, playing real sloppy, peep, and again connect, where I still have this option, and, oh man, robot wants me to play this connection, but even if I don't, even if I just play this, now all of a sudden this is... This is a much stronger outside, right? There's no longer a cut here. So again, not finding this peep is a really big loss. Like, yeah, like 14% loss. <laughs> and we're almost back to an exact 50-50 game again. Uh, of course, the robot doesn't like connecting right now. It's like, white's still fine. <laughs> you don't need to play this. Uh, it is on the radar, though, so it's okay. Uh, I take the biggest move on the bottom, but now that white is invested here, right, with this and this shape, um, Robert just wants me to fix the cut and continue to reduce. And that seems pretty, pretty logical. Uh, but when I take it back down here, again, we're almost down to a 50-50 game. And I play all the blue moves in this sequence. Yep, including that one. I'm just on fire. Three blue moves in a row. You can see that rank graph just zoop, go back up. And here, I looked at this a little bit after the game, and even though the robot likes it, I'm not sure what the robot is supposed to do with it. It's like cut here and then abandon. Find a cut here. Oh, and just back off. Weird. Wow. So we're just running with a stick, and right, it just has a galaxy group here that has no home. Hmm. Huh. So
So still, we don't know how white is going to take advantage of this. What if we play this move? I guess I guess white can white can sort of force a response here. Oh, and white st still has this one. So if black comes out, there's this to gain an extra move advantage here, and then attack and try to take over the bottom. Yeah, real real long term planning here to give up these two stones for a whole bunch of Aji on the outside. My opponent doesn't read it that way, so just takes this and. Again, comes back here and plays this. And I think I think also what's happening is that um, I'm letting the computer run right now a little bit longer than I did yesterday. You know, yesterday I just did the quick review, and so I think all these all these dips down were actually swinging the game in favor of uh, white. So I'm think I'm, at this point I don't think we're actually going to hit 13 lead changes because I seem to remember this being a lead change here and quite possibly there. So apparently I lied. We're not going to see 13 lead changes, at least according to when we've let the robot run a little bit longer rather than just do the whole uh, quick review. Uh, okay, I play here. Robot says overplay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's always a good sign. The robots who can overplay like crazy say, no, <laughs> you just overplayed. But not by bad. Not badly. <laughs> not badly. Oh, it just says here. Yeah, and I thought about this move, but I wanted more. I was like, you know, I've got a weak group over here to attack. I can always go get more resources if I need it. But I also have a weakness, so being defensive sounds great. All right, anyway, in the game, play there. My opponent just backs off, and again, the robot's like, no, 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 this is this is no good. <laughs> we're just we're just trying to hang on to what we have. That's not a way to win a go game, especially not a go game where you're behind. And so right now, it's giving Black a ten point lead. Just on this board as is. Uh, I push, which in retrospect, the robot likes this push better. And that, like, I don't... Like, it's hard to know which one to do. Like, this one secures this a little bit more. But if I push this way... Um, yeah, I, guess, I guess white still backs off here. Still has something narrow. Well, anyway very tame but <laughs> when, white, when white again just says no i want this territory robot is very displeased so look at the look at these swings though right just just straight up straight down these series of mistakes of passivities between the two of us all right and so next move where is it oh right play this which is totally one of the the candidates robot says you know it's a little bit safer to protect the center <laughs> You've played a little bit thinly over here. Why not protect that, Nick? And I say, hold my beer. <laughs> totally fine. Because <laughs> this, is, this is actually the shape point, right? To start anything against this group, you do kind of need this one. Uh, if I play here, yeah. White has this, this leaning move. And I guess can lean over here. Oh, man, this one. Cool. All right, I don't know what this is. This is... This is robot craziness <laughs> um by the way this is this is the natural way for this group to expand is my point so i just want to prevent that very human um and my opponent still expands that way anyway right this is this is basically for no points dummy and now i decide to to uh try to make this happen robot's like not the right timing we wanted you to do that for so long but hey i get to it when i get to it and here I take that one, and then here, all right, bad idea of the game. So normal Joseki move is here, and white links up, and basically black gets Aji <laughs> and can prevent some white eye space. Like, like this connection is not a move you want to play right now, um, but black can connect it to really ruin the eye space. Now white will have just no problem just running out and attacking, but so you don't want to commit to that. You need to shore up the outside. Um, before you do that, but white shape is spoiled in the game. I'm I'm like, you know, but I see a way I can just kill these two stones Right. I have to give up these two stones in the game I recognize that but I was like these two aren't as big as these two right because I've invested this stone here And furthermore these two aren't big because this group is already undercut this group can keep crawling and minimizes territory So I played for this exchange <clears throat> And so instead of playing on top I connected down here and if you don't see how this gives up these two stones yet. Oh, don't worry. 
it'll happen. My opponent plays there, and uh, I commit to killing off these two. And my opponent makes an exchange. Really good exchange. What, what are we at here with the point graph? So right here, everything is going great. Right, then I play here, it's a minus 20% decision. Opponent responds, not what the robot wants either. I continue, robot says no. But we're fine. Yep, and all this is all, we're just playing all blue moves. Although actually it wants white to connect, or to cut over here. Uh, why? Oh, I looked at this actually, yeah, yeah. So, this is the problem. Right, if if and when black decides to... Interesting. Um, here we go. Uh, okay. Uh, basically, white can take these two stones back, uh, but black gets stronger over here. Right, so black, black offered an exchange. White can offer the offer to exchange back by black getting a little bit stronger in the corner. And the robot says that's actually good for black. I, it's so hard as a human to to rectify that, right? Like it's like, like look at this, right? I have the corner here, and I have some garbage. Okay, let me go back all the way to. Uh, we'll say. We'll just say here. Right now, I have the corner, and white has garbage. <laughs> like, like it doesn't feel like it changes much. <laughs> But the fact that this gets a lot stronger, apparently the robot says worth it, and I just don't see it. Like, I don't, it's so hard to recognize this strength gained here is not being worth it. But I guess, I guess the, the robot says giving up these two stones is bigger than I think. And I shouldn't just take it to, to grow the bottom. But still, it felt like a good exchange for me. And again, I'm still winning point scores, like black is up by six. So that's fine. Yep, and then this move, uh, which I do respond to, it's kind of nothing. So now, for sure, black has this whole bottom and the corner. White did, white, if white, and if white wants this, white has to come back here, right? So, like, right now we got a 12-point lead is black and sente. Man. I play here. Robot's like, fine. You played a move in the center. Good job. <laughs> Applaud. <laughs> Maybe not quite the move to protect everything, but he got the right direction. All right, White's getting nervous, has to make shape. And come up. And then this way. And I defend that way. So all these were very passive moves, right? Again, this is what's important. I want to know what to do here. This is the move I... Oh, right, this is just easy shape, I guess, for White, but... Um, so white, white's alive, but I'm real solid now. So, I don't know, that gives, that gives white a lot of, com or, uh, the robot a lot of confidence. So, I, I don't know, I, I, I didn't want to give white easy anything. <laughs> Which is why I played here. But then here, same thing, I should just protect. I made sure white didn't have easy anything. But the thing is, white white's actually stronger here than, than I give credit for. There's actually more place to make eyes than I thought. All right, now here, here we go. Uh-huh. This, this was a clunker. This was kind of a misread. I was like, oh, I can play in here and then connect out either way. No, no, that's not a good idea, Nick. That's, that's pretty bad. But it doesn't actually change the the overall status of the game too much just gives white a few points back because now right now we're back to an eight point lead before this we're at 11 point lead so this is a three point loss and we play there and that's fine and we do this and this and now here all right i'm eyeing this cut this is in the game this is what i'm really kind of trying to spy because there's a weakness here, and I find it. I just don't really use it very well. Uh, I play up here, which is fine. Like, it's not the worst move in the world. 
again, I, after all this thickness, all right, I'm not going to invade in here anymore, so I can just play this reduction. Um, I do connect, and my opponent does respond, which just guarantees the victory. Again, once my opponent was showing me that he would become dedicated to this territory, right? Like, he's not going to play another move over here. Although, actually, it really doesn't like this move, huh? <laughs> like, it likes it more when in the, in the initial readout. It's like, yeah, that's fine, 77%. Now it's like, no, 60%. <laughs> like, there is this clamp in here that's a problem. Um, right, so once, once I'm in there, right, white feels real bad, although, ironically, the game is more 50-50 than ever. Because white has a chance to do some real damage. So this is not the game, because my opponent played this very old, passive kind of response. Again, every, every one of these moves, I'm thinking my opponent is like five years older than at the start of the game. So I think my opponent's up to about 55, 60 right now. And now I cut. I take this cut. And this cut is on the radar. It just says I should prep it first. Uh, for those of you who are wondering why this cut is a thing, if white Ataris and tries to kill, check this out. Uh, it's just like the voice is like, give up. Don't, don't play anymore down here. Just give up. Um, yeah, it's like finding some value in this move. All right, but if we play here, there is this move. And black just gets to cut through. So that's a nice gain in Sente. I guess I didn't... Did I have to... No, white never tanuki that whole sequence. Right? Here. Here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no tanuki. Yeah, so it's just, it's just a perfect gain in Sente. Four point gain. Four, well, actually, more than four points. Way more than four points. Uh, if white goes this way, now we can have a fight for these two stones. But the problem is that I don't have enough prep done for this, so it doesn't quite work. Uh, it's still fine. Like I just, I, this this cut would just be more severe if I played it this way first, right? Um, I think actually it wants me to shore up my defenses. Yeah, and now after after all these exchanges, it's like, well, here now take this cut. Let's see what happens now. <laughs> It says, deal with this. No, here, we're, this is what we're playing. Best move here is this one. What's going to happen to these three stones? Robot says, ignore. <laughs> I don't want to ignore. No one, no one... The robot's so distracted by other more important things. I just wanted to know what happens in this cut. Alright, let's just play this out a little bit. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, we're going down rabbit. Robot rabbit hole. The robot ha rabbit hole. No, the robot hole. Robot hole. That's my new... If anything comes out of this video, this is the term I want everyone to know. The robot hole. The robot ra ro robot rabbit hole. I like it. That's great. All right, going down the robot hole. No, we're going to go back to the game. Cut. And I run out, and he fights, and I take this Hane. No, I don't. This is not the game. Sometimes I think you guys are just watching this and watching an insane person just talk to themselves for an hour. <clears throat> Is this the game? No, we're not in the game. Go back to the game because... There we go. All right, we cut... Oh, right, because I cut before making any of these prep moves. That's right. And so... Uh, yep. Yep. This was a real... Not a good move. <laughs> I thought I had a Hane sequence in here, but it turns out I'm short of liberties, so it doesn't work. All right, I thought I could play something like this. And da-da! Oh, but that doesn't work. <laughs> for so many reasons. So that was that was a hallucination from back here. Um, I tried anyway. So, but after I hear I'm like, give up, let's just cross cut and get something. So in the end, this white group becomes strong, but I'm also connected. And so because I'm connected and still have enough points, uh, the robot win percentage goes skyrocket high, right? It's like, okay, black has nothing to worry about. Ergo, game's over. 
And so that's all that's all the robot really needed to feel really good about this game, right? Is just to know that I wasn't going to um, screw it up, basically. So here's the disappointing thing. I know I promised you 13 lead changes, but I'm using Kotago, and I wasn't using Kotago yesterday. And Kotago technically gave us two. <laughs> so between just running a lot more variations, right? When I'm doing the quick reviews, I'm just putting it to the robot and letting it go, like, I don't know, 500 variations a move or something. Um, and I think it was Lizzie, not Kotago. Um, when I was running it in a different robot, it was all these, these spikes were crossing into the 50-50 line. And Kotago the whole time was just, no, nope, we're just cool. Black is just, black, black is, you know, a screw up, but <laughs> black can't screw anything up so badly that it ruins the lead change. So that's pretty fascinating. I think from here on out, it's just end game, and there's nothing white has. Like, it's just, oh, there is a screw up, is there? Nope, it just immediately, yeah, so it, so it, Often when you're running just a couple hundred variations, right, it'll find these little screw-ups that aren't real screw-ups. It's like, no, 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 robot just needs more time to think. <laughs> Went too far down. Oh, there's another one. The robot hole. So you just moved right out. So it is important you run these things for enough variations, which is why, you know, I had, I had a robot <laughs> analyzer on my phone, right? My phone can't analyze it fast enough, right? There's not enough cycles that can be run. So really hard to trust. But either way, not much exciting left happens in the game. It doesn't even go to counting. He resigns before the end of this one. Um, so, you know, in the end, like, this this is a pretty clear win for me. Robot says it's about 17, 18, 19 points up for Black. Yeah, because I think he... I mean, we do go to counting, but I think, I think, he, or I think it's the thing where he resigns, um, like, right at counting. It's like, what's the point? Um, oh, a few more, a few more little, uh, potential errors, but I think they're going to smooth out, right? If I just, if I just put the variation on for a second, yeah, yeah, it goes right away. Yep. It's like, no, no, no. Um, what's interesting, so on the left, just, here's, here's one of the things to learn about endgame. Oh, there's this interesting co, but I don't, it, it's not interesting enough. There, there's sort of a quasi-interesting co on the right, but on the left, um, this move here is really big like is really is so much bigger than it looks because of the follow-ups um notice here right white doesn't actually have to ever take these two stones off the board so if white gets to play here um first of all white's threatening to take more let's not even let's let's give white one point for that it's worth like two points but it's a threat so it's only a one point um but white gets that and then um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is like plus nine points for white. But in the game, whoops, well, here we'll just play it because, uh, no, no, white's move, sorry. And then, so in the game, when black gets here, black, uh, white can, white can still get these, but it's only half value. So that's only, instead of nine points, it's more like eight. Um, none of these other points are points now. And if black plays an additional move, which I do, right, now white does have to take this off the board, and black can make an additional four to five points. So it's like a it's like 13 points, or well, half, well, it's half of that, right, because we don't know who's going to get the next follow-up move. Um... So if I make another five, that's only like half. So uh, half of five is two and a half or so. So we had we had like nine-ish points before. Or maybe I counted those twice. Maybe it was eight or minus one, like seven plus two and a half. Like, like this move is almost a 10-point move is what I'm trying to say. I haven't quite done the math super accurately, but I'm, I'm in the ballpark, guys. Um, so I know intuitively, right, you guys are looking at this like, that's a big move. Did you know this move was like 10 points, though? Like this is a 10-point move. And the robot still says that's bigger because of all the, the sentate it gives you. Just to make sure my middle group is connected. But yeah, even oh, even here, it's still threatening. Still threatening. Yep, and now, alright, so as soon as we play all the moves that threaten to kill the center, the robot's like, yep, 10 points here. Kabam. Biggest move on the board. 
Uh, it's even bigger than this stuff, right? Like, which is pretty fascinating. Which this is this is almost like Sente. Like it's it has so many follow ups that it's it feels like Sente. So yeah, this this type of move, um, you know, sets up a really big end game. And so in the end, I actually no, that's not the game. <laughs> in, in in the end, I get that too. This is not the game either. I need to go back there. So I get to crawl here, and you can watch. Let's see how much of the score jump. Because right now we're we're at mm, ten points. I'm winning by even less. The robot says, no, that's not the best move. Or wants me to do this first. And then you get that? That seems unfair. Alright, that's got to be a confidence thing. Like with this connection. Because this move is bigger than this. So I don't, I don't understand. Okay, well anyway. I get that one and you can just see that score drift upward. Because right now the robot supposedly read out the end of the game. And it's got black winning by eight. But I don't really pick up like any other significant points here, and by the end I win by twenty. So something is off. Like white doesn't make any obvious mistakes. These are all just simple pushes. Like we and it wants everyone to play this, right? Because this is the follow-up to the big move, right? This is a big move and it's big because of this follow-up. And like this robots is freaking out. It's like everyone just play here. This is the biggest move. For so long. That's embarrassing. There we go. And I get it. And so... From here... Yeah, from here it says white is 11 points. There we go. This is this is, this is is the point where we can actually evaluate this move. Uh, 11 point uh, loss... Or not loss, but behind for white. And it goes up to 18.8. Um, here. Or... 18.0 after I actually play it. And there you go. So, so in the end, it is a win. It's a sloppy win. We've all had them. We've all been there. Uh, Katago really did change uh, how I viewed this game, though, um, compared to, like, the, the quick Lizzie review, where it really never got below 50%. It was always confident that Black was actually in a... In a it, advantageous driver's seat. And again, the reason for that really, really comes out of, uh, at least in my opinion, that top right corner, right? Like once, once this top right corner kind of gets sealed in and I have my own prospects over on the left, um, like white, once white plays there, <laughs> I know it says it's only a 68% win, but this board is just too comfortable for black, right? It's too hard for white to find um, enough points here. Because if white works really hard to build points here, white black can build an equal number of points down here. And black already has two corners. The only white corner is really small. So for me, that was more the story of the game, is that we both built potential, but white worked too hard to turn his potential into points, and it was just over-concentrated from you know, coming out of this shape. You could say there was a second story of the game, and it's that black that white never found a way to attack this black stick effectively. And that's true. Uh, there were definitely opportunities, which is why you got so much swinginess in here. But, you know, eh, couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. So, again, 30 seconds of move is kind of fast, and it's hard to orchestrate these really long-term reads. And neither one of us, you could tell, like, this is both like a late-night game for, <laughs> for everyone involved. A lot of sloppy moves. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're staying safe. Uh, please, you know, do what's best for, for you, your, your heart, your society. I know we're in a troubling time right now, uh, but just act in the, the interest of, of not just yourselves, but everyone, and we'll come out better for it. So I'll see you next time. <laughs>